Over the past several months, I've been spending a lot of my time sampling for gold ore. Looking for quartz veins that hide that shiny yellow metal rock called gold. Every time I take a sample, just like where this piece of gold ore came from, I take two or three buckets worth of material. But when it comes to actually processing and testing it, I will generally only process about one half of one of those buckets. And I do that because if there isn't any gold in the quartz, I don't want to expend the extra resources on processing the rest of those buckets down. If my half bucket of quartz shows that there is gold contained within the rock, the rest of it ends up in this tub, and when it's full, like it is now, I do a big ore crush, and that's what we're going to be doing today. That whole bucket is going to get crushed down and processed to see how much gold I've collected over the last couple of months. There just ain't no way I'm dragging this heavy bastard to the car. Every single one of these rocks came from a sample that had gold in it. So we know we're going to get some gold. The question only is, how much? And with these questions in mind, it was off to Mix House to use his homemade ball mill and Mad Max. One of the most important pieces of equipment, a dust mask. Quartz is essentially glass, and when you crush it, a lot of very fine particles enter the air, and the last thing you want to be doing is breathing that stuff in. What's going on, bud? What's going on? Either these are getting heavier or I'm getting weaker. <laughs> Come over to Mick's house to use his chain mill crusher. Now we're having to replace some of the crushing elements of this because they've worn out. That's roughly what a shackle should look like and that's what happens when you slam it into rocks repeatedly again and again and again. You drop your ore in up here, it feeds through a no return chute so you don't get any rocks blasting back in your face. Which is a safety feature we like. That's your combustion drum where your rocks fall down into. This thing is spinning at super high rates of speed, flinging these shackles around in a circle. They smack into your piece of ore essentially making the rock explode. And it's all powered off a very old electric water pump. That process will create what is called a rough crush. It then needs to go into our ball mill here, which is a heavy duty industrial cement mixer. In that mixer, are nice big heavy steel mill balls. These balls roll around and around on top of your ore, crushing it to powder. Quartz is really bloody hard, and so making it weaker is a good idea before you crush. Therefore, we're gonna light all of this on fire. Fire solves a lot of problems, and hard quartz is one of those problems that it can solve. One full bucket left and one quarter bucket left. This is definitely going to go on because it looks like our drum is actually at capacity and I don't think we're going to get all four buckets on it. And as Senor Mick was saying, more or less because the rock is hard, yes? It's hard. We don't absolutely need to do the fire stage. It just makes it much better to grind down and much faster. So spending a little bit of time doing this saves us a lot of time on the back end. The chain mill is probably 90% of the way put back together. Our next step is to pour cold water over that once the charcoal is burned down and that is going to shock the quartz into fracturing. Fire plus oxygen equals more fire. Yes, science! This is Mick. This is his ginormous leaf blower. <laughs> The moment of cooling has arrived. The whole idea of this is to shock that silica into fracturing. Are we ready? Yeah, we are ready. Who needs a sauna? <laughs> It's only just starting to leak water. All of that water up until this point had evaporated on top of that quartz. You think I got it hot enough? She's hot. She's hot though. <laughs> this is why we do it. See how it's turned that piece of very hard silica into a shattered piece of messy quartz. It's actually breaking up in my hand. Look at that. That's perfect. That would have taken like 10 bashes with a hammer. Quartz is a seven on the Moore's hardness scale. Moore's, Moe's. I always get that one wrong. Moe's bar. See, Mick knows what he's talking about. But we've turned it to like a two, maybe a one, 
Because we can do that with hands, and your hands are soft and meaty. This is the part where I get to pretend like I'm in Mad Max. What does he scream at the gate? Nobody. Nobody leaves. This is the first rock to meet the end of its life at the hands of Mick today. It's going to get super loud and kind of scary, so I'm not going to be able to talk through this whole thing. Um, I'll see you on the other side. Mick named his crusher Max after one of his favourite movies, Mad Max. And the reason for that is he built it himself, this entire thing from bought pieces off Facebook, and it can take absolutely monstrous rocks and reduce them to powder in no time at all. I'm not sure how Mick can, like, put up with that noise, but anyway. We filled the first bucket up, and that is our first pass rough crush. And because we soaked it in water, we're not getting much dust, which is really good. Now that we've got it down to this sort of size, we can put it in the ball mill. And that is where our gold really gets released. This is the slowest part of the whole operation. It has to sit in there until it gets reduced to talcum powder, and that can take hours. This is where we save the time by spending one hour of firing that quartz at the start because it makes it very brittle and quicker to break down. I just wanted to come in and show you guys away from the noise what some of the ore looks like that we're processing now that it's broken up. Look at those silver sulfide pockets. Look at the oxidization. Look at the minerals. This is what holds gold. We have successfully created goo. Just beautiful golden goo. It's super important to wash your balls every now and again. Looks like a bad night to talk about. In theory, there should be a whole bunch of gold in that bucket. Le pen, little handful. See how we didn't leave the ball mill running long enough and we've got these big chunks? We're going to classify these out later so we can rerun them. Oh, we got gold and you're about to see exactly why we have to crush this so fine. Look at how small that gold is. I went and I pushed it all into a pile so you can see it better. That's the type of gold we're releasing, and that's why we need to crush it so fine. Immediately after crushing that ore, I got really sick for a week, but I finally made it to the creek with this man. And our ore, which has all been crushed down. I'm using the Gold Fox Mini Monster to process the majority of the ore, but I've also got this cool thing from Dream Mat. The Mini Monster down there uses expanded mesh over AstroTurf to capture the gold, whereas this uses Vortex Riffles. Each of these little cells here create a vortex, and that vortex helps suck heavy material down into them, and it sheds off all the waste rock very easily. I'm very confident in the Mini Monster, but whatever it misses is going to get caught by the dream matting. <laughs> oh. well, there's the blood sacrifice, so now we're going to get gold. Now, we don't have a base for this, so we're just going to just going to bodge this together with rocks. There's going to be that princess leap across the pond with um like 40 kilos <laughs> in my hands. In there. God, that's one majestic looking cameraman. Catching gold that comes out of Hard Rock Crush is one of the hardest things I've had to do as a prospector. And that is simply because the gold that comes out of Hard Rock Ore is usually extremely fine, but it also has shape about it. It means that it catches the water and it gets taken down further on the sluice run. That's why we have one, two, three different cells of Dream Mat plus expanded mesh. And if the count of Sesame Street has taught me anything, the number of the day is four. Four capture methods is better than one. I love seeing those cells work. They're all like <laughs> That is the first bucket. 
I'm all for chasing butterflies, Fern, but not when it's around the sluice box directly, okay? <laughs> go that way. There we go. <laughs> that is a lot of sulfides. Holy crap. <laughs> wow, there's going to be a lot of work and clean up. All of this silver material here is iron and galena. So the iron is going to be very easy to get rid of, but the galena is a mixture of lead and silver oxide. No wait, sulfide. If I don't get my eyes right, people on the internet will murder me in the comment section. When we burnt the ore to make it weaker, we burnt it with old pallets and we didn't bother pulling the nails out, so now I'm finding them in the crush. And some strong nails. Oh, it's all done! It only took a week. I know how difficult hard rock gold is to catch, so there is definitely going to be gold in the dream mat sluice. We're going to clean that out first and separately to the main box. I'm going to expect to see gold in this, but you never know. Sometimes the top box does a really efficient job. <laughs> Not a dot in the dream mat. That means all of our gold was caught up the top. I mean, I said I had confidence in the mini monster, but not, not that much confidence. Holy crap. There's a piece right there. That's probably the chunkiest piece of gold we're going to see today. Typically the ore that we crush has very fine gold. So that's a, that's a puglet for us. Most of the gold that comes out of ore is very fine, like super fine. That's why we have to keep crushing it and crushing it to get it finer and finer. But to see little pieces like that indicates this is a reasonably rich brush. That is a heavy pan. That is a very heavy pan. Unfortunately, probably not all gold. It's probably going to be a lot of iron and disappointment. Um, I am not going to go down any further than that. I'm not going to reduce this any further on the creek because the gold is too fine. So we're going to take it home and do it on the miller table. I just want to see if I can't get to the bottom of the pan and see some of the gold that'll be locked up in this. Oh, there's some pieces. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Oh, we got some nice little round chunky bits in there. Yeah, boy. Heaps of fine stuff too. We've got to do this at home. Can I speak to the branch manager, please? Mick, that pan is almost as heavy as my thoughts and feelings at night. Deep. That is about half of the chunks that I managed to recover from the plus 50 mesh. Let me demonstrate to you a problem that I'm having with the minus 50 mesh. All that silver material is our sulfides. It's extremely heavy and it's non-magnetic. You can even see a single piece of gold of size down here. A piece of gold just like this is very easy to manipulate using a brush and a miller table. But what's not so easy to manipulate is the tiny gold up here. That is gold under a 20 power magnification. This is the same gold with it gone. And as you can see, it is tiny. There is a reason that Mount Baker Metals and Mining uses fire assays to separate gold out of hard rock crush. It's a lot faster, but I don't have that equipment. I have now literally spent days hand panning this down and I've already got on to Mount Baker Mining and Metals. Jason's given me some very valuable information on how to chemically process this and smelt it down so I can extract all of the gold. But the problem is I don't own a lot of that equipment and because I'm transitioning into doing more hard rock gold mining, I'm going to need to get that equipment. Which neatly brings me to, please check out the description below if you would like to help support the channel. That's where you'll find links to my web website, my merch shop, and my Patreon account. On Patreon, it costs just $1 a month to sign up. We give away gold ore, pay dirt, and gold prospecting equipment every single month. And there's no long-term commitment, so if that's something you're interested in, please check out the description below. 
I'm sitting here and I can already hear a lot of comments going, Chris, that's a lot of work for not a lot of gold. But that's very much the same as saying it's a very expensive way of procuring fish by going fishing. It's a hobby. It's something I enjoy doing. I love going out and finding hard rock and crushing it up and getting the gold out of it, regardless if it's a little bit or a lot. If I was doing this for a job, I'd be doing it very differently. Because the miller table was losing me a lot of gold, we're now doing the concentrates one teaspoon at a time in a gold pan. This is 100% a very tedious way of doing this. The miller table was losing me so much fine gold, I had to stop doing it. And there it is, the super fine gold I'm getting out of every single teaspoon. I've also kept a piece of the ore that we crushed up to give away completely for free. If you'd like to have a chance to win this piece of gold ore, all you gotta do is drop a comment below. That's it, that way I can find your name and I'll let the winner know in the next video. This is the last couple of teaspoons and we've got a good amount of fine flower gold in that. Look at that. This has honestly been one of the hardest ore processes I've ever had to do simply because of the sheer quantity of sulfides. I took one 40 liter bucket of ore, we ended up with about 30 liters of crush after we burnt and processed it. And after sluicing, this is how much we got. All in all, for one and a half buckets worth of processing, that is a decent gold take. By modern standards, these are really chunky pieces of gold to come out of a load deposit. And I was able to recover a lot of fine gold just hand panning. But we'll go back over this chemically at a future date.